Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our monthly Lunch and Learn. My name is Chris Sorchik, and I am the Executive Director here at Capital Area Healthy Start Coalition. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today to learn more about um, some of the work that we're doing at the coalition level and to learn about one of our newest programs. We do ask that if you're not speaking to please keep yourself on mute so that everybody can hear our speaker. Um, so our coalition has a five-year service delivery plan and access to care is one of our key priority areas. The coalition has been expanding our programming to ensure all pregnant women and families have the support they need for a healthy pregnancy, labor, postpartum period, and a healthy first few years of baby's life. One of our newest programs is the Healthy Start Community Doula Program. When we talk about our Community Doula Program, though, one of the first questions we're often asked is, what is a doula? And um, so today we are going to learn the answer to that question. We're gonna learn who and what a doula is and how doula support really does make a difference in the health and well-being of both mom and baby. We do ask that if you have questions um, during the presentation to go ahead and add those to the chat and we'll do a Q&A at the end of uh, our speaker's um, presentation. So please welcome me in joining our presenter today. She happens to be the Healthy Start Community Doula Program Coordinator here at the Coalition. Her name is Keisha Jenkins. Keisha lives in Tallahassee, Florida, where she serves as an advocate for maternal health and early childhood, childhood education. Keisha holds a degree from Tallahassee Community College, St. Leo University, and University of North Florida. Keisha worked as an early childhood educator for almost 20 years and saw firsthand the effects of a mother's health on the future of her child. She has lent her voice to legislation for the expansion of pregnancy Medicaid, numerous early childhood policy, including serving as a lead facilitator for the Future Project, and is now working actively to provide equitable doula access locally through coalition building with several local organizations. During her transition from the classroom into policy and advocacy, Keisha has earned several certifications, including three doula certifications, breastfeeding counselor, and infant mental health endorsement. One thing that she didn't add to this long list is she is becoming a childbirth educator as well. She's in the process of completing that certification. And although she loves everything community and serving her pride and joy, this and serving her pride and joy rest in the eyes of her four humans that she is affectionately nicknamed the A team. Keisha's motto is let your passion lead you and do everything in peace, light, and love. Keisha, thank you so much for agreeing to share your expertise with us today. Thank you for trusting me in this. I'm super excited to be here today and to um, kind of help you guys understand a little bit more of who doulas are and the role that we play in the birthing space. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, yeah, we're going to hope it does right. All right, there we go. And we're going to go ahead and get started with the presentation. So to start off, we you are here today for the Art of Birth Support Lunch and Learn with Capital Area Healthy Start. So thank you, Chris, for that beautiful introduction. A little bit about me. I am a trained early childhood educator and a lover of all things community, and I strive to draw the connection between early learning and maternal health. Pictured are my amazing humans, and we are affectionately known as a community family. Disclaimer, so before I begin this presentation, I want to be very frank. I don't know everything about the birthing world and the views of this presentation are carefully cultivated utilizing my own experiences as an educator, a doula, and a mother, and of course, research. The goal of this presentation is to ignite the conversation of the importance of doulas and why we are needed in the birthing space. So my why. My why starts with black maternal mortality, mor morbidity, sorry. And so a couple of the things that are on this screen are just 
stories of women who were not heard in the birthing space. Amber Rose, 26, she died after cesarean. And she actually tweeted out before her death about her negative experience in her birthing space. Dr. Shalon Irving, 36, three weeks after giving birth, she had voiced that she had some issues and she ended up losing her life as well. We have Yolanda, who was 35, three days after her C-section, she also lost her life as well as her twins and she left behind seven children. Then we have 39-year-old 39, 39 Kira, who lost her life bleeding internally for more than 10 hours following a routine C-section. This is my why and why I got into this work. I have some stories that are closer to my heart, but this is why I decided that this was something that I needed to step into and something I need to speak and advocate for. So what is a doula? <laughs> so a doula is a trained birthing professional who provides the birthing person with emotional information Emotional support, information, physical, and mental support during the prenatal birth and postpartum periods. So we are a trained birthing professionals, but we are not medical. There is nothing medical about a doula. And the scope of work on a doula is simply that we are an emotional support for the birthing person and their families. That would look more like mothering the mother. We are there to help them navigate the birthing space. This can look like a birth plan. This can look like touring the hospital with them going to postpartum and prenatal appointments, helping them pick out a pediatrician, helping them understand their birthing choices and empowering them to learn how to advocate for themselves. Uh -oh. oh, see, I'm going backwards. Sorry about that. There we go. So I wanted to kind of explain what a doula is not. A lot of times when we say we're doulas, a lot of people would put us in line with the midwife. Although we work closely with the midwife, there are stark differences between the two. A midwife is a healthcare professional. A doula is not. We're just trained birth professionals. We do no medical procedures. We do no medical tests. And we're there to provide ongoing support during labor, birth, and postpartum. Whereas sometimes a midwife is there simply for the birth and postpartum and prenatal period. And they kind of have gone on. Both help you with informed choices. Both help are interested in the well-being of the client and both are there to support you in all types of birth, including those in the hospital. But sometimes a lot of conversations I hear doulas and midwives are kind of put so I wanted to go over the types of doulas so I'm going to skip community doula for a reason but the first is deaf doula so this is a doula that specializes in assisting parents who have lost their children or elders who are going through the transition of losing their life a fertility doula works with clients who are having a hard time conceiving so they're there to help them through that process and be that emotional support a birth doula provides prenatal, post, and birth services, but post is in a limited capacity, oftentimes ending at the six-week mark or before. Postpartum doulas are simply focused on the postpartum period, and they can go all the way up until eight, 18 months. Abortion doulas, and I see my typo there, abortion doulas are there to help navigate the waters of abortion and, the, and help those parents be able to cope with those skills. And then we have the full spectrum doula, which is a doula that encompasses all of those above. Now, I wanted to take a moment and talk about community doula because we are rolling out the new community doula program under the Capital Area Healthy Start and why community doula stands out to be different. Like their independent co counterparts, community-based doulas provide continuous support to birthing people during labor and delivering and helping them cope with physical mental demands of giving birth. But their drawing on a specialized training also lived experiences on guiding birthing people through labor and delivery. Community-based doulas provide support and physical comfort that enhance the childbirth experiences for the entire family. Community-based doulas also focus on assisting clients on connecting with resources in their community, building connections and coalitions within the community so that they can continue to support them. Also supporting the medical staff in the hospitals and building a relationship with the medical staff so they can provide the adequate care and they're not looked upon as a hindrance. Most community doulas are connected to a local hospital or health agencies, just like Capital Area Healthy Start. And community-based doulas are there to remove barriers um, for underserved communities or those who do not have access to doulas. So why a doula? Doulas can assist with reducing the overall C-section rate by 
And the way that they do that is because we're assisting families during the prenatal period with understanding exercises such as pelvic exercising, how to stretch the pelvis, proper nutrition, keeping a track of their blood pressure and things that are help that are going on within their systems. We also help reduce the length of birth by 25% because we're there to help the mother learn to allow her body to naturally process the birth. So instead of running to the hospital, the second she feels like she needs to go or what the movies are showing us, <laughs> My water, you know, I have to run. I'm looking for a gush of water. We work with the client on understanding that the first stage of labor is oftentimes when you should be resting, eating, and getting yourself together for the hospital. They also decrease the likelihood of negative ratings of the childbirth experiences by 33%. And we'll talk about this a little more in following slides, but that's by offering the birthing person an experience that they may not think that they could have. And then also breastfeeding success, because a lot of the doulas that were mentioned in previous slide are also cross-trained in breastfeeding support. So let's talk about what strategies doulas use. Doulas use counter irritants or counter pressures, cognitive strategies, gait control, and body mechanics. So with counter irritants, that may look like a comb that is specially designed that a client can hold. And what it does is it trains the brain when we go into the cognitive strategies to focus on that pain instead of the pain that they are feeling. We also have counter pressure, which is where we can use our hands to help apply pressure to the client to take away some of those back labor, some of that pelvic pressure that they may be feeling. We also help during a prenatal period with choosing things and what to think about. This is, as we'll discuss later, birth affirmations, maybe a picture of someone you love, your family members, or I had a client one time, it was cats. She absolutely adored cats. So we watched cats videos every time she had a contraction. Gate control, this is also about focusing attention on pleasant sensations to help distract you from your pain. So this may look like finding a point, a focus point inside of the room, looking at your partner, maybe hugging and kissing your partner, something to help you move your brain from pain to enjoying or pleasure. Then with body mechanics, this is changing positions. Gravity is needed for the baby to move into the birth canal. So the the doula can step in and assist with changing positions and moving babies. We can do this at a home birth. We can do this at a birthing cottage or in the hospitals. Um, we're just there to assist with the client being able to change those positions and move around because sometimes, hey, you know, you just need a little help with moving. So on this page, you talk a little bit about some of the things that we use. So battery operated LED lights are something that I keep close and absolutely have learned to adore. It helps bring the anxiety down in the room helps them feel like they're a little more at home. And it, it also kind of eases the anxiety, lets that cortisol come down, and then we're able to focus on what we're there to do, which is birthing the baby. Affirmations can be posted throughout the room, or they can be something that you guys have agreed on to whisper to your clients. I'm often known to get down and say, all right, we're going to work on our breathing right now. Your body is made for this, so we're going to take a deep cleansing breath, and we're going to focus our breathing and kind of breathe through that contraction. Rebozo and yoga balls. I am a lover of all things rebozos, but um, it is pretty much a very long, I have mine behind me, but a very, very long, long scarf. It is has me Mexican heritage to it. And what we use it for in this picture, she's using it to help lift mommy's belly up a little bit during a prenatal period to help give her some release off of her pelvis. But you can also use it behind the mom to help open up her pelvis by shaking the tree. Mom can use it. Mom can use the rebozo to help um, to be able to squat down and use it. And then she's also leaning on the yoga ball. A lot of times when we discuss the yoga ball in the birthing place, people think you sit and you bounce. Doulas are in this space to kind of help you understand the various positions that you can do with that yoga ball. And there are so many. Aromatherapy is another way to help with that pleasure sense. Um, we do advise as doulas that you do introduction to aromatherapy prior to going into the delivery room. You let the um, the birthing person smell the different scents and see what they like. Um, sometimes you may be in a birthing place and they change their mind and they don't want it and that is okay. Other things that we can use are back massage rollers. You have no idea how much those come in handy. Peanut ball is another good option, which is often used when mom has an epidural and she can no longer get up to the yoga ball or the cub or the rebozo or to go for a walk. We'll use the peanut ball as well as the bed to help give mom that gravity and help baby ease down into that pelvis. 
Counter pressure is also used and can be used in both um, in the birthing space to help apply pressure to mom's back to help as the baby comes down. And of course, a doula always has to have snacks and water. I am a foodie. I make sure I have healthy snacks that I can eat quickly without my clients noticing. So let's talk statistics. Um, doulas are in the birthing space because we are needed to help with the increasing rates of um, maternal death that we are seeing. The In the U.S., 21.1 deaths per 100,000 births, according to WHO. Florida is at 15.2 per 100,000 births. And BIPOC women, which are women of um, people of color, are three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes. Doula statistics. 39% decrease in risk of C-section, a 15% likelihood of spontaneous vaginal birth, and a 10% decreased use of medication. Although we do not tell clients they cannot use medication, sometimes once you get into that birthing space and you have trained your brain, there's no need for the medication, and that is something that parents are actually looking forward to. When we're discussing spontaneous vaginal birth, that will look like a, a decrease in inductions, which we have started to see on the rise. So I talked about Florida. I talked about the U.S. And so I wanted to kind of bring up Florida's charts here for a second and show you um, the rates here in Leon County. So right now in Leon County, as you can tell, the orange, <laughs> the orange um, line is the state of Florida. During COVID, COVID years, we did see a spike in um, maternal deaths, which we knew about, but we're also starting to have a, de a decrease, but we are still above, um, in Leon County, I believe we're at 22. Um, we are still above the national average. We're still above the Florida average for Leon County. And as you, if you look, you can tell there have been ups and downs and ups and downs, which are all related to social determinants of health, but we're praying that we can keep it down with the implementation of doulas in the birthing space. So a lot of times people think that doulas are not for me. I can't get a doula because of X, Y, Z, or I can't get a doula because I can't afford a doula, or doulas are for people that aren't me. And doulas are for that kind of mom. They're for moms that birth at home or in a birth center in a hospital. They're for moms who decide they want epidurals and don't want epidurals. And the moms are just like, let's see what happens. Doulas are there to to be a supportive partner, not to replace a partner. So just because you have, because you a, have a, just because you have a husband, a partner, a wife, whatever it may be, does not mean that the doula coming to that space is replacing that person. We're more so just there to support you guys as a whole. We are there if you decide to breast bottle, whatever. <laughs> um, and we're really the real, the real purpose behind a doula is to respect, support, encourage and assist with the peace and calm of a mom the day that they give birth. Uh-oh, sorry about that. Oh, so before we go into questions, I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about the Capital Area, Area Healthy Start Community Doula Program and why we're in this space. We have decided to come into this space on the basis of wanting to take away the stigma of that kind of mom. We are here to so we can encourage all moms to have access to a doula. If you want one, you get one. That, And we are also training doulas, community doulas, who have had birth experiences or who have gone through the birthing process and some who have not, who have had stories from their families and just have a vested interest in the maternal health and want to be that support and encouragement for the birthing persons. As a community doula, we also have serve as a long-term doula. So sometimes doulas, they'll, they'll come in around the third trimester. And our hope and our prayer is that as long as we get a client in time, we're looking at trying to be there for early pregnancy, which is around that second trimester, going all the way up until um, that three-week to six-week postpartum because we are blessed to have a beautiful handoff system within the coalition. Also with community doulas, oftentimes there are other pay sources available. So there are other coalitions, there are other grants that are out there that can help mitigate that cost for the birthing person. So that's not something that's stopping them from getting the assistance that they need or desire or want. 
So I'm going to go to questions. I love questions. I love chatting with people. So please feel free to put it in the chat or to come off mute and ask me if I know the answer, I will give it to you. Um, so feel free to come off mute and ask any questions you may have. Hi, I just wanted to say, uh, well, first of all, I got in late. Greetings, sirs. I really enjoyed what I was able to see. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for the great work that you're doing in our community. Thanks so much, Mama Yada. And that just to kind of talk a little bit about some of the resources that are available, which is what the doulas are here to also look into. We also really look at connecting um, clients with community partners. That would be places like M3, which is what Mama Yada is a part of. And we also look at connecting with other community um, community partners, which are the health department, neighborhood medical center, bond, to ensure that clients are getting what they need. Thank you, Corinne, for asking about credential. Do doulas have to be credentialed or does the certifying body have to be credentialed? Each individual doula has to be credentialed. That is the state of Florida. That is doulas, period. If you meet a doula and they do not have credentials, walk away and find you one that does. <laughs> and when we mention credentials, that would mean that they are certified under an agency. Oh, all of the Capital Area Healthy Start doulas are using the GROW curriculum um, as their certifying body, but you also have Donut International, DTI is out there. There's a lot of different organizations that you can look to for certification. And then once they are certified um, under the GROW doula process, what the coalition is then pressed into the state and the state looks at all that and then their credential with the state of Florida. Yes, Dr. Harrison. Hey, I got a surprise for you. Hey, sweet. This is Marcellus Durham, your dad. <laughs> that you called me. <laughs> and look, I remember when uh, you came through my program, the Getting Hair program, and uh, um, I'm so proud of you because at the beginning, um, you just needed to know a direction. And uh, uh, what I facilitated to you, you were you were in, you did it, and look at you now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to let you know that I'm going to definitely. Uh, I have some uh, young ladies are interested in becoming a doula, yeah, and I'm going and I'm yeah. going to go ahead and and and, and, uh, and refer them. Yeah, we're going to facilitate that under um, yeah. Project Swan and Action Two to get some of our returning citizens, whatever you, you all would be able to help us do, but to try to um, get this, because you know that maternal child health is both of our, our uh, platforms. So this is, we are great. we're excited and we're so happy for you. Please, we're all about connection and doing that. So please reach out to me so that we can make that happen. Um, we are looking at trainings and we do provide trainings on scholarship basis. So it's also kind of taking that cost away from those who may want to be a doula because becoming a doula is not cheap. No, <laughs> it's, it is not. Right. It's That's very right. expensive. And so we offer scholarships so that those who want to do it, those who have the passion and may have a barrier such as financial, um, they have the opportunity to have access to that training and then provide that to those in the community. A lot of us have lived experiences that others can hear. Um, and then Marcellus kind of touched on mine a little bit. I am a big proponent for capital area um, community action, and I do assist clients if they're looking into going through that program and they need assistance with that. Corinne, you said, how long is the training? So depending on the agency that you go through, it would depend on how long your training is. But each agency, nine out of 10 times, does have a continuing education portion, which includes continue when you learn more, a little bit more about the doula work. And you get into dealing with like how the business of being a doula, what it looks like to be a doula, self-care of a doula, um, because I put little snippets in my slideshow, just like little quotes. And one of them definitely is that, you know, doula work is hard work. We lead with our hearts, but it's definitely hard work. And sometimes you have to make sure you're taking care of yourself so that you can be um, a service to the community. How do doulas collaborate with the hospital staff, especially if a birth plan may not go the way we plan? So how do we do, how do we collaborate with the hospitals? First, I always tell doulas, we are a part of the birthing team. We are not there to take over for the nurses. We're not touching medical equipment. We are non-medical. We are there as a part of the birthing team. 
So how do you make friends? You go in smiling and you're there to assist them. I get ice for my client. I help with bed changes. If they get up and take my client to the bathroom, I'll switch out pads and little things that the nurses, they're kind of like, hey, thanks for doing that, right? So you build a rapport with the staff. And when you build that rapport, nine out of 10 times the birth plan can go. But when we're talking about birth planning with clients, we always insert that what if. <clears throat> that what if would look like, I want a natural birth. But what if something happens? What are your non-negotiables? What are you saying? I don't want this not to happen. So I can give you an example. I had a client, um, we ended up in C-section and she looked me in my face and said, I told you I wanted to breastfeed. I said, okay. So she came out of her C-section. I stood next to her for almost an hour, holding her child and nursing her child on her breast. And she's talked about that when we re- when we rewrote her birth and we were talking about it in her postpartum period, she said, I will always remember that you did that for me. So those are things that we can do in the birthing space. If a birth plan doesn't go as planned, I like to talk about that beforehand. Even if it's something that we want, I try to have that conversation before we get into the birthing space that things can take a turn. And if it does, how will we process that? And that's something we can do in the postpartum period and why that... Um, we had that 33% success rate with people in that dissatisfaction because when you're going through the postpartum period and you're talking about their birth, you're helping them look at the positive. So even though I had a C-section, my baby's herb side, I got to breastfeed if that's your desire. <laughs> and, um, you know, we can just talk about different ways to help her. Sorry, I was reading this. So then we have Corinne, she said, do doulas have to show their certification to hospital staff? That's a yes and a no, depending on the staff that may be there. If you're if you're affiliated with a coalition or a um a birthing center, sometimes you have a badge, sometimes you do not. A lot of us wear doula shirts, so you know who we are coming into the door. I do have a copy of my um my certification I keep inside of my badge just in case somebody asks, but no one has ever asked. Um, will they accept a certification? From any trained body, a duty certifications have to come from a specific type of organization. So that depends. If you're trying to affiliate yourself with Capitary Healthy Start, you will have to take um, the Grow Doula training because that is the curriculum model that they use, hence why Keisha has three certifications. <laughs> um, but if you decide to just go out on your own and be a doula, no, I think the hospital is okay with that and different organizations, as long as you have proof that you completed the entirety of the program. And that means that continue education piece because some programming, you can go through the three-day training, but if you don't do the rest of the steps, then you are not a certified doula. Um, you're welcome. What, do, what should mothers look for when selecting a doula? When a mother is selecting a doula, a mother should look, like, look for someone that is pretty much their vibe. I hate to use that word, but it's the truth. You're looking for someone who kind of aligns with your beliefs, aligns with what you want, and who can match your energy. And when I say match your energy, that looks like I'm a high energy human naturally, but I've had clients who are normally low energy. And that means when I'm in a birthing space, I learn to step back. I'm a little quieter, a lot more reserved. Um, and I just kind of read the room. But you have to ask that question. So I always encourage clients to ask questions. What is your philosophy as a doula? Why did you get into this work? If they say I'm in it because of money, <laughs> then walk away, you know. But if they come to you and they say like, hey, I, I'm in this because I really want to see birthing persons have access or something to the line of that, then that's what you're looking for. Also, you also want to make sure that they have the time, Right. We're talking about birth if I'm a mother. So if you're asking me, okay, I have a delivery in August, you know, that may look different. I may have to say, okay, well, I may have to get you to a doula friend. I kind of forgot that slide. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit too, about doula friends. Make doula friends. Find friends in the community that are doulas. Connect and partner with other doulas. Have those people you can call, you know, and say, hey, this was a rough one. Stay within HIPAA, but still have that conversation. And a part of the Grow Doula programming, they have access to those on staff with us. They can call and say like, hey, this was a rough one. And, and we can process that together because you need to process a birth just as much as the parent does. So after a birth, you sit down and journal that birth. How did it go for you? Is there something you would have changed? Um, how would that look different? I know my last birth, I was head deep, kind of upside down in a birthing tub 
applying counter pressure. And I wrote in my birthing journal, I need to lose 20 pounds. It was just like, you know, hey, this is what needs to happen. So that is, those are kind of things that you can do in terms of doula work and being the doula and looking for a doula. Thanks, Ms. Shanta. I appreciate you. Um, but also I think we kind of touched on a little bit about the doula work and what that looks like and how it's different. If you have a client and they're needing more postpartum support, then, you know, make that doula friend that you can reach out to that may be postpartum certified. Like we don't want to leave any mamas out there. That's part of the doula work is not just a birth, but also helping with postpartum stress, anxiety, and psychosis, and being able to help parent a mother or a birthing person be able to identify and then find, um, assistance can you share your experience with sometimes having to stay 12 to 14 hours with a mom's <laughs> so it can be intense and anyone thinking about becoming a doula wants to be aware of this thanks sure so um <laughs> those who know me know I can have I've had some long hauls recently um and a lot of times that comes from induction which is why getting those clients early on and having that conversation as long as it's not a medical crisis we can sometimes avoid inductions but with saying that how do you stay that long? You take a break. It is okay to walk. Go take a walk. If mom is sleeping, mom is safe, everything monitors, everything is good. Tell mom, hey, I'm just going to step out for a second. Take a walk. Take a break. Snacks are essential during these 12 to 24 hour periods. Um, I, I think the last long haul, I actually lay next to mom. I put my head on the bed next to her and I said, okay, we're here together. And even though I hate that picture and I actually had that picture, Chris, and I did not put it on the slideshow, um, her partner took a picture of us literally holding hands and sleeping because if she woke up, I wanted to be able to feel her. Um, and we did that because I think at that point we were at almost a 48 hour mark and I had been up and she was worried about me. And so I was like, I'm okay. And she said, no, I'm worried about you. And so I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll lay next to you. <laughs> so you're not, I'm not far away and you're not worried about me. Um, and and so, yes, it can be, it can be definitely intense and coming off of that, you have to come home, you have to sleep and you have to rest and come off the high of whatever energy drink you're drinking <laughs> or, um, whatever liquid IV you're on, whatever it may be. Um, and also taking deep breaths during that process. Just, I no joke guys, when I tell my clients to breathe deep, I'm breathing with them. We're doing this together. We're in sync. I'm not just doing this by myself. How to do is help during the golden hour. We help during the golden hour. So the golden hour is that one hour post-birth where they do nothing. Mom sits, we initiate breastfeeding. It's normally pretty quiet. The only thing they'll really come and do is just make sure you're not hemorrhaging in the placentas, definitely out. But that golden hour, how do we help? I help if mom needs to go to the bathroom, we get up and go. I help mom initiate breastfeeding. I help mom with any questions that she may have. Sometimes it's stuff simple, like when are they going to give them a bath? <laughs> you know, hospital policies. But also, if it was something traumatic, we talk about it really quickly. Just a brief conversation, like where are you at? How are you feeling? Talk to me. So that that way we know where we stand. Or if I see something, let's say mom is kind of not all the way. She's looking a little glassy. I'll say, okay, mom, hey, you good? What's going on? Check in with you. Normally I am out within the hour, but if I notice that mom is still kind of not really up and moving or struggling a little bit, I'll hang out a little while a little while afterwards. Thank you, Kara. I appreciate you. Um, and so yeah, any more questions? I'm kind of liking the QA. It's fun. Any more questions? What is an absolute must have in your doula bag? Oh, wow. I didn't bring my doula bag inside, but an absolute must have in my doula bag would probably be my lotion. I know that sounds odd, but my lotion. Um, I have learned that pregnant women thoroughly enjoy foot massages during labor, and I don't know what that's about, but um, my lotion can, it has to always be in there, Tanisha. It has to stay. It can't go anywhere between that and my snacks. Um, because a lot of the times the hospitals have birthing balls, hospitals have peanuts, they have the cub. Um, I normally keep my rebozo around my neck, but if they don't, you have a hospital sheet, you know. So it's kind of like outside of that, you know, other than that, I think my other must haves are definitely some of the things I had on a PowerPoint, what would be my um low lighting, um, my massager, 
but I kind of fall in love with my hands. So the massager, I don't think I've used it in the last couple of births. I think it's been me and my hands lately. Um, but yeah, I think that she's a big, but my, my doula bag is a big girl. She's, she's a pretty healthy size doula bag, but I try to keep everything in there that the, me and the clients discussed before. I keep a copy of the birth plan as well, because a lot of times you can tell moms all day long, like, hey, make a copy of your birth plan. They're going to forget. Um, so I do keep a copy of their birth plan inside of my doula bag. And when we get to the hospital, if the client has not given it to the nurse on staff, I do. And I kind of inform them like, this is what we're looking to do. This is how we're looking to do it. And because of those established relationships, a lot of times there's no pushback. When I first got into this work, yeah. I've had nurses look at me like, okay, <laughs> you know, but after building that rapport with them and showing them that I'm there to assist them as well, right? I'm not just there. I'm there as a, birth, a member of the birthing team. I've had nurses come and say, oh, you're there. Good. Let me know if you need anything. And they will go do what they need to do. You know, <laughs> and I will do the ice and I'll buzz. I'm like, hey, we got to go to the bathroom. You know, just it, it kind of gives them a peace of mind, too. So they're not stretched thin everywhere and gives them a second to take a deep breath and maybe focus on a client who does not have as much support because we're finding that some women are birthing alone, which is why this doula space is also so important. No one should birth alone ever. So this is this is that is another reason why um, we're in this work. Other questions for Keisha? Do you have a first three houses? I don't. I actually like both of them. <laughs> I like both of them equally. And I think that um, having that conversation early on, that's a really good question. Having that conversation early on with your client about what that looks like. Because if I have a client who's afraid of needles, home birth may not be what we need. <laughs> you know, like we have to really be honest in that space. Like, what is your pain tolerance? What does that look like? Let's work on some breathing techniques and see if this is something that you can do. Um, but personally, I really genuinely like both. I, I don't have any issues with either one of them. Um, I think it's just whatever the client's preference is and I'm there for their preference. Any other questions? All right. Um, well, thank you. Thank you, Keisha. Yeah, no problem. Um, we are really excited about our community doula program. We have trained, I think, 41 doulas to date and looking to train an additional um, cohort in the August timeframe. So please watch for more information. If you are someone who is interested in becoming a doula, you can find information on our website and watch our Facebook um, page as well. We will be sending out a recording of the presentation from today um, and our next Lunch and Learn, our Lunch and Learns are the first Friday of every month. So our next Lunch and Learn is going to be on May the 3rd. We are going to be learning about tub and swimming safety with Rhonda Corelli. Registration information will be out shortly. So we will give you back a few minutes of your day. I hope you all have a fabulous weekend and be well.